All right, so fearless predictions for the week are, as I said just at the end of the last piece, not so fearless anymore for me. I'll let you speak for yourself. Two games on the sled this week. Um, <laughs> not a ton to choose from. And uh, I'll let you tell me what you want me to pick first, or you. Uh, uh, first I'll one. go this week. Uh, or Orlando Orlando. Go Buffalo. At Buffalo. Buffalo's got to win. Um, uh, but I don't think they will. I think Orlando's going to take this one. Yeah, ride the hot hand. Uh, Buffalo, again, who knows what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. What I saw from Orlando last week, they look good. Yeah, and but, uh, uh, like that was well. and in Buffalo fans, you ain't going to push these guys around by any means. No, they're, God, they're, no, no physical, oh boy. They're tough um, Philly at Calgary, and that is, uh, I guess these are both on, are they tomorrow night or Saturday night? Uh, the Saturday? six, they'll be on the Friday night. Okay, so yep. they're both tomorrow night. Philly in Calgary. Philly in Calgary. Philly coming off a big win. Uh, Calgary is hungry as heck. Uh, Calgary, I'm going to pick the home team here. Yeah, these are Saturday, by the way. I just noticed on your camcorder there. It says the 4th today. This is Thursday. They're Saturday. I'm working afternoons. Who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, <coughs> one win against a team that's struggling doesn't turn the season around for me uh, as far as Philly's concerned. Sorry, Stewie. Um, but... Yeah, Calgary at home, uh, still a very solid team, still a very good team. I'll take care of you there as well. So, just before we move on here, we've got a couple other things we wanted to talk about. Uh, just a quick rundown of the scoring leaders in the in the, uh, in the the NLL this year. We've got the top 20 here. Uh, not a lot of shockers, a couple of rookies in there though from Toronto. Yeah, uh, Colin Doyle leading the charge with uh, 16 goals and 45 assists. Garrett Billings, NLL Rookie of the Month, just named today. Uh, this being uh, uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. Jeff Zawicki with the Stealth, Blaine Manning, Rock, Stefan LeBlanc. Uh, that is, to me, the biggest surprise of the year. This guy's just brand new. Yeah. And uh, John Grant the with the Nighthawks, Josh Sanderson, Calgary, Lewis Ratcliffe coming back into his own with the Stealth with mm -hmm. 20 goals. Callum Crawford, uh, not a household name around the National Lacrosse League, and he's leading the Minnesota Swarm, yep. just ahead of his teammate Aaron Wilson. And that is the top 10. I don't see uh, John Tavares in there, obviously, because John hasn't played a lot this year. Yeah. But uh, the reason that uh, they've got so many rock players in there, they've got 132 goals. They've played 10 games, which is uh, quite a bit more than some of these other guys. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, you've got to prorate this or take it for what it's worth. When some guys, some teams have played 10. Orlando, on the other hand, has only played 6. We're just looking in here at the top 20. Jordan Hall's sitting in 18th. 35 points in six games. Project that through to 10. He's got about 59, which would put him in second place. Yep. So Casey Powell's not on here. A few other guys from Orlando are not here. But again, six games versus 10 for the Rock. So that kind of explains that. And so now we're going to move on a little bit. A couple of things we want to talk about. One thing we didn't get a chance to talk about last week or a couple of weeks ago we were looking at. We could have seen the, uh, or sorry, we will be seeing, uh, according to, to some reports, uh, the rebirth of Oshawa Minor Lacrosse. Yeah, uh, Dieter Kuhner and Todd Paulus, I believe, are the leading uh, the leaders in that. Uh, uh, minor Lacrosse going to return to Oshawa for the first time in many many years, mm -hmm. and it's going to be quite uh, interesting to see the competition between Whitby, Oshawa, and Clarington now, and uh, West Durham, and West Durham, which is great uh, and good for you guys. Yeah. Oshawa's missed. I know that uh, from a Green Gales standpoint, when the Gales moved away from Oshawa and took up residence in Clarington, which a lot of you guys don't know is Bowmanville, uh, they alienated a lot of people. And uh, people won't come to the games because uh, they feel that they were cheated after supporting the Green Gales under the Bishop uh, uh, reign there for many years. Yeah. Moving over to Bowmanville, you don't know the area here. There's a lot of competition between the two towns. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, it'll be years uh, since this has taken place. I mean, I was a kid when Oshawa folded, disbanded, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of those kids, most of those kids that played, came over and played into Whitby. Um, Clarington opened up. Some of them went back to Clarington. Uh, now Oshawa's opening back up. I, You know, I've said this all along. Being a guy from Whitby, I've lived in Whitby my whole life. It's for the better of the game to open this up to as many kids as you can and get as many kids playing across these different towns as you can because the rivalries have always been there when I was a kid. Yeah. Let's get them back there again. And you know what? If we dismantle a stronger team, i.e. Whitby, at the ex or, or at the benefit of having other organizations running, I'm all for it. I yeah. think it's great. Um, so, you know, kudos to you guys, um, Dieter, Todd, and everybody else that's involved. Good luck to you guys. I know uh, from a perspective of me helping out in the Whitby minor board, there is support out there for this, and I think it's going to be a great thing for the cross. 
One thing I'll throw at you, though, a good challenge. Uh, what's going to go on with the name? I don't know. There is some uh, rumor afoot uh, that uh, there could be a name change coming for either one of these two organizations, either Oshawa or Clarington. And uh, we'll just have to leave that up to the powers that be, Gary. I don't want to start any rumors. Uh, absolutely. And that's what I was excited. exactly what I was going to say is I don't know what's going to happen. The Gale's name is owned, from what I know, by the Bishop family. That is correct. Uh, yeah. They loaned the use of it to Clarington when Clarington started up. So Clarington obviously is using the Gale's name. Now that Oshawa is going to fire back up, just what's going to happen there? I don't know. You know what? Maybe we'll look back on this in a year or so and say, oh, I guess that's what's going to happen yeah. to it. So, anyways, uh, good thing for lacrosse at the end of the day, and uh, and more power to you guys. Uh, good luck with the Oshawa program. Now, I want to start this part off. Okay. This gentleman beside me here and a lot of his friends have something that's really near and dear to their hearts. That's the Truly Lacrosse Cares Marathon. This year they're going to try and stage another 30-hour game to raise money for the Ability Center, which is, Gary? In Whitby. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being built right at Iroquois Park on the south side of the park, just south of the restaurant, where the tennis courts now this, currently reside. this will be a facility for? This is a facility for adults and youngsters that are physically disabled or physically challenged, I guess is the proper term now, mm -hmm. nowadays. Uh, and it's from what we're being told, I mean, they haven't dug ground yet, but there's a lot of information. If you look at the uh, Lacrosse Inside the Game site, there is a link to TLC. Within that, there's also a link to the Ability Center. So at this point, it's all drawings. It's all concepts, but they have got the commitment. They've got the funding to dig, and they've got the funding to build. So when we sat around the table this year, we thought, you know what? Children's Wish was a great organization to support last year. Let's try to spread the wealth as best we can. Let's let's pick another charity. And this one came up and we thought, you know what? They're building. They will be building while this game's going on. Great. They're supposed to be in the ground as we're playing, which is a great thing. So Now, Gary and his group are concerned that there aren't enough people taking interest in this yet. We've got room for uh, how many players? 100. We had over 100 last year. And so far we don't have a lot of sign-ups and there has been a little bit of uh, misinformation go up on the internet. People, you know, we're trying to do a good thing but they didn't get all the dates and times right. So tell everybody out there now, Gary, dates and times for sign-ups and how they can sign up. Well, we're at the stage basically. We've got, uh, and I'm roughly giving you numbers here, we've got roughly 25, 30 people right now that are committed to playing. Mm -hmm. uh, we are holding four registrations every Thursday night for the month of March, so that includes tonight, not sure if we'll have this out in time or not, but that includes tonight, uh, they're all four at Iroquois Park, they're in the main lobby of Iroquois Park, so as soon as you go through the front doors, we're going to be right smack dab there. $20 registration fee gets you into the game to play, we're asking everybody as we did last year to go out there and get pledges though to support the Ability Center and bring in funds through, through that. We also have a silent auction, all the information, everything you need to know, forms to sign up to play, they're going to be located at tlclax.wordpress.com. If that's too far for you or too long for you to remember, go to Lacrosse Inside the Game. There's a link right there. Everything else is on the site. Fantastic. Okay. So let's see if we can get people signed up. It was a great event last year. As I said, we raised over $30,000 for Children's Wish. Let's bring out another charity. Let's help them out. And uh, being as they're just starting, let's give them a good boost and, uh, and help them out. Sounds good. So... That's about it for me. I don't know if you got anything else you no, want to talk about. No, that's it. Everything's cool okay. with me. So, on behalf of Ron Messer, who is? Uh, support your local lacrosse team. Uh, summertime season coming up. The fans, the operators need you more than ever this year. With the economy the way it is, uh, I can already hear from some of the operators having trouble getting sponsors. They need butts in the seats. Get out there. Your kind donation at the door in the form of your admission is greatly appreciated. Lacrosse is in the air. Mm -hmm. Gary Mark along with Ron Messer reminding everybody to stay safe, be good, keep your stick in the air.